Hello, welcome to the St. Ignatius uh, College Prep Virtual College Fair. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any point in time. They love your questions, so keep them coming throughout the presentation. You can ask them about their own campuses or you can ask uh, general college admissions questions as well. To everyone in the audience, your camera and microphones are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening uh, and including in the next hours. The fair continues one more hour after this, so be sure to sign up for more sessions. Um, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered, strivescan.com slash Ignatius. So we are in session B6 here. So our schools are UC Riverside, Auburn University, University of Rochester, Oakland University, Reed College, and Washington University in St. Louis. So uh, we are gonna go ahead and kick this off with Gabriel from the University of California, uh, Riverside. Take it away. All righty, thank you so much for joining. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen here. All right, perfect. Again, thank you so much for joining. My name is Gabriel Hernandez III. I am an admissions counselor at the University of California, Riverside. And I'm really excited just to share some more details about UCR. And uh, hopefully you can consider our campus. So we're part of the University of California institution system. There's nine different campuses. Uh, Riverside is located in the heart of Southern California. So we're essentially located in the heart of Southern California. We're about an hour an hour away from the beautiful beaches of Southern California, from LA, uh, from the happiest place in the world, Disneyland. Um, we're also about an hour away from year round snow up in Big Bear Lake Arrowhead and an hour away from the deserts like Palm Springs and Coachella. So Riverside is kind of like a central area for um, great things to happen. And we actually originally started off as a citrus experiment station extension from UC Berkeley in 1907, just because of the central location. And it wasn't until 1954 that we started as a college of letters and sciences uh, with about 100 students. Our research has existed for over 100 years and we've transformed the citrus industry. So if you've ever had any name brand cuties or halos that you've bought at the store, uh, we've worked with those companies to invent those products. Um, our institutional facilities though have existed for close to 70 years. So. Um, if you do have more questions, I, I see that we have some questions in the Q&A. We're, we're going to get to those um, later on, but I'm just going to share more information about UCR. So um, we've grown to, out, to about 26,000 students now. Um, that's as of this past fall. So our campus is continuing to grow since we're situated on 1,200 acres of land. So we have the space to grow, and as our student population is growing, so is the faculty population. So we have close to 1,200 faculty. 98% um, of our professors are respected uh, professionals and doctors in their field. So they have their PhDs, and um, their main priority isn't just instruction. It's also research. Again, we're a public research institution. So that allows and enables our students to implement what they're learning in the classroom through practical research experiences. Um, and it's not just dependent on your discipline or field of study. Um, we do offer multidisciplinary research uh, opportunities. And so our average student to faculty ratio is 21 students to one professor. And we have over 120,000 alumni, 120,000 graduates of UC Riverside. So we have over 150 different majors um, and minors. We're considered to be a medium sized campus. And uh, just because of time, I'm only going to highlight a couple of popular, selective, and also unique majors that are found at UCR. So I'll start off with engineering. Um, we actually have a five-year program that students can apply for the bachelor's and master's degree. Our most uh, competitive and popular program in engineering is computer science. Um, with the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, our most popular programs include pre-business and psychology. Uh, we do have a school of business, right? It's listed here, but students actually apply as a pre-business major in the College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences first. Um, and then we'll select their concentration to focus on in the School of Business Administration. A unique program in the College of Humanities is uh, creative writing. We're the only uh, university for public institutions in California uh, that offers a bachelor's degree in creative writing. So um, that's something unique. Um, and in terms of the College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, biology is the most popular program. The reason for that is 
uh, because we have a medical school. So um, students tend to choose biology, but you can choose other majors besides biology to go to medical school. We reserve seats for UCR graduate center medical school. Um, and you can also apply early on, I believe during your third year or junior year, um, if you're a competitive science student, um, then you can apply to that program, directly be admitted into medical school without having completed the MCAT. So the MCAT is waived. Um, lastly, the School of Business, um, we're one of three UC campuses that offers an undergraduate program. Ours is the largest and also has the highest accreditation, double ACSB accreditation. Um, in terms of housing, I want to mention this really quickly. 86% of our incoming students will choose to live on campus in the residence halls, but it is not required to live on campus uh, since we're situated in a residential community. By living on campus, so everything is included. So it's fully furnished, uh, meals are included, there's a cleaning service, uh, as well as utilities are included. Uh, lastly here, I want to mention in terms of financial aid, uh, we're a public institution. So what that means is that the priority for financial aid does go to our California residents. However, we understand that it could be, you know, college could be expensive. So we have the non-resident achievement scholarship. This is based on your UC GPA and awards up to 30% of your tuition and fees covered. Um, so it's $13,500 annually, $4,500 per quarter. So we are on a quarter system. Um, in terms of admissions requirements, um, I want to just to share that with you. We have our subject requirements, what we call our A through Gs. So this is just based on your high school subjects that you should be completing, in, of course, in high school. Um, but they're listed here as well. So if you want to take a quick picture, please feel free to do that. Um, so we have two requirements, the subject requirements listed here as well as the GPA requirements. We will recalculate your GPA for only 10th and 11th grades uh, using the weighted scale. So we will consider AP, IB, or dual enrollment courses to add an extra point on the GPA calculation. Um, and lastly here, UCR is test-free for fall of 2022. So we are not using SAT, ACT scores on the admissions process, um, but we may use it later down the line when you are enrolling into uh, your English classes, for example. So I believe I am out of time. So I just want to leave you with um, some contact information. If you want to scan our QR code for more information, you can fill our inquiry card here. If not, you can always um, just take a picture of this slide, contact us by email, or if not, follow us on our social media accounts. Again, thank you so much. At this time, I believe I want to pass it to my colleague from Auburn University. Yeah. Again. Perfect. Thank you, Gabriel. Appreciate it. Next up, yeah, we've got Auburn University. All right, War Eagle, everybody. My name's Clayton Ann Short, and I'm the admissions advisor for you guys for Auburn University. Um, we are a large um, land, sea, and space grant research institution. Um, we are part of the SEC. We were founded in 1856, and though our name has changed over years, our mission has remained the same. We believe in working hard, pushing forward, and doing good for others. Um, we are one of the top public universities in the nation, and we're ranked that again and again every year. Um, we're also known as the best value in our state, as well as the absolute best. So we are the number one institution in the state of Alabama. Um, we are located in southeast Alabama, about 30 minutes from the Georgia border. You can see this, the larger cities we're close to, about an hour and a half from Atlanta, two hours from Birmingham, Alabama, three hours from the Gulf Coast beaches, three hours from um, the mountains in North Georgia and Tennessee. So a good location in the southeast. Um, Auburn is a college town, so the big thing in Auburn is the university. Um, this is a Top left picture of our Tumors Corner. This is where our downtown area meets campus. Um, it's a good representation of how tightly woven our campus and community are. Um, it has a lot of hangout spots, restaurants, coffee shops. We have a state park that's really close to campus as well for hiking, biking, fishing. Um, but again, if you're looking for a full collegiate experience where you're surrounded by people your own age, that is Auburn. Uh, now we have over 30,000 students in total enrollment. Our undergraduate population is typically around 25,000 students. Um, our freshman class is usually around 5,000, give or take. 
Um, we are about 60% in-state students, 40% out-of-state, um, but all 50 states are represented on campus in over 100 countries as well. So geographically, our students are coming from all over, all calling Auburn home. Um, but with academics, we have 12 colleges and schools, over 150 majors, so a lot for you guys um, to choose from. We're actually ranked in every field of study, so no matter what you want to do, you can't go wrong. These are all Really wonderful programs. Um, our largest colleges um, on campus are the College of Science and Mathematics, and the College of Engineering and the College of Business. Um, but we have programs from culinary sciences to apparel, merchandising and design to um, professional flight, um, wildlife management. So a lot of different options for you guys. Um, but I always highlight, because you guys are incoming freshmen, and I changed my major four times while I was at Auburn, um, it's kind of hard to know what you want to do before you um, have to commit to something. We do have an exploratory program that allows you guys to begin undecided. Um, and you'll take core courses, so you're not going to get behind at all. But you'll also have an intro class your freshman year where you'll go through all the different programs that we have to offer, take interest quizzes, personality tests to kind of help give you an idea of what you may be interested in before you actually have to pick something. So um, you can go see a list of all of our majors at auburn.edu slash majors to see those there. Um, but along with academics, you know, it's great being at a large school um, with all the options, but it can be overwhelming. And um, that's why we have this large university with a small town experience. And um, that's kind of our mission and what we want to remain. That's why we are not growing any bigger than what we are. And we do have surprisingly small class sizes and you're gonna have deep personal attention from your professors. And um, 80% of our classes have 40 or fewer students. We have a 20 to one student to faculty ratio. So your professors are gonna know you, know what you're struggling with, call you out for skipping class, um, but you're still at a large SEC school where you can storm a football field with 87,451 people, which is really fun. Um, along with, you know, game days and things like that, of course, coming from a unique institution, you have um, fun traditions like rolling tumors corner after an Auburn victory, whether that's football, basketball, baseball, equestrian meets, gymnastics meets. If we win, we take toilet paper and we roll the downtown area at Tumor's Corner and um, hanging out on Sanford Lawn, Tiger Nights. This is a picture of one of our many over 550 student ran organizations on campus. Um, it's called Auburn Dance Marathon. We have anything from leadership opportunities like SGA to Greek life to intramural and club sports to religious organizations, cultural organizations. We even have something called the Pizza Club where they travel around and try pizza together. Other traditions like Hey Day, where we all slap name tags on and say hey to each other to the pregame Eagle Fly, uh, Spirit Bands, Marching Squads, our famous Tiger Walk. For us, game day is more than just football. It's all of our traditions and bringing us closer together in school spirit um, on campus. But all of this does make a pretty awesome institution. That's why for 2020, we were ranked number one on Princeton Reviews colleges with the happiest students. And they just came out with 2021 and we are also still in the top 10. We've been in the top 10 on this list for the past six years in a row. So if you wanna be one of the happiest students in the country, um, you'll definitely want to come and apply at Auburn. Um, these were our requirements for our applicants for 2021. So any juniors, um, 2022 will be coming this summer, all those updates. Um, but you can anticipate you're gonna to have to fill out an application and um, you can find our institutional application or we're on the Common App. Um, we also look at your high school transcript. We look at your grades 9th through 11th grade. Typically in past years, we've required the ACT or your SAT, um, but this year we were test optional and they haven't made a final decision on that fall 2022 class yet. Um, but I'll be sure to update you guys as soon as I do. Um, now we are hosting tours on campus right now. So go to auburn.edu to come visit us. Um, there's also some virtual opportunities. And then my contact information, if you guys need anything, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm also happy to set up a day for you guys. So have a great night and we're equal. Awesome, thank you. Next up, we've got the University of Rochester. Also a quick plug, feel free to use that Q&A button on your screen at any point in time. If you've got questions for any of our presenters who have already gone or that are on our list, you can have those chats now. All right, take it away, Andre. Hello and good evening. 
thank you for having me. And that's a uh, that's a tough act to follow, Auburn University. Uh, my name is Andre McKenzie, and I represent the University of Rochester in New York. Um, and I'm just going to be relatively quick uh, talking about the University of Rochester. So hopefully you can see uh, what I'm sharing here. And Rochester, uh, University of Rochester is located in Rochester, New York, uh, which is the third largest city in New York State. Uh, and just to give you your bearings of where Rochester is in New York State, um, we are located about a six hour drive from New York City a three hour drive from Toronto, Canada, when we're allowed to actually go back into Canada. Uh, and Rochester is part of the scenic Finger Lakes region in Western New York. Uh, so we always like to give everyone their bearings of where Rochester is. But just to give you a little bit more bearings of what our campus environment is like, uh, in the middle here, you have our river campus, which is our main university campus. Uh, it is home to the College of Arts, Sciences and Engineering more specifically divided into the college, the college and the Hajum School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. We have two graduate schools on uh, our river campus, uh, which is the Warner School of Education and Human Development and the Simon Business School. Uh, in the background here, you see downtown Rochester, which is about three miles away uh, from the university campus. And way back in the background, you have Lake Ontario, one of the Great Lakes, uh, which is Rochester is located on one of the Great Lakes. Uh, we also have a medical center that's part of the University of Rochester, which is located directly across the street from the River Campus. So for those of you that are interested in the medical sciences, uh, you can literally walk across the street and you can be at the University of Rochester Medical Center, which is home to our School of Medicine and Dentistry, our School of Nursing and Strong Memorial Hospital, which is a teaching hospital. Uh, the University of Rochester is a small research institution. Um, so we have about 5,500 undergraduates on our campus. Uh, and the hallmark of the University of Rochester is our curriculum. Our students do not have required subjects. Our students do not have a core curriculum. Our students are the authors of their educational experience on our campus. So when our students come to campus, they're able to choose what it is that they study. And how they do this is that they choose uh, to study in three general areas, the natural sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities. Ultimately, you will choose which of those areas to major in. And outside of that, you will do something that we call a cluster, which is a series of three or more related courses related based on a theme, and you get to choose that theme. So to quickly run through that, um, if any of you are interested in, let's say, biology for a nice, easy major, um, well, not easy, but an easy example. Uh, if you're interested in majoring in biology, that would be that would be what you pick. And then from there, you would need to do something that we call it the clusters, which are the three connected courses in the two areas outside of the natural sciences, because biology falls in the natural sciences. So you look at the social sciences and we're all living through this uh, pandemic um, and it's a study of epidemiology, right? It's a study of uh, public health. So maybe you will decide to do a social science cluster in public health. So three connected courses um, in, in public health and epidemiology specifically, which are, would be a nice complement to that biology uh, major. And then outside of that, in the humanities, you get to select three connected courses in any area in the in humanities. So maybe you decide to, you're a big film, film buff. So maybe you decide to take film and media studies. So three connected courses in film and media studies. So now what you've done is you've taken courses based on your academic interests. So you're majoring in biology and you're doing a cluster in epidemiology and a cluster in film and media studies. And what a lot of our students, close to 45% of our students, will end up turning that into a double major because you can build on your cluster and turn it into a minor and possibly turn it into another major. So maybe you're enjoying that film and media studies cluster and all of a sudden you decide to turn that into a major. So now you're a biology and film and media studies double major. Why? Because that's what you wanna do. That's what you're interested in. Um, and that's the biggest reason why students come to the University of Rochester is to 
have that flexible curriculum and to really and truly study what they love. Um, and the way that we do that and the way that we get students to our campus is we undertake a holistic application review process. So we will review all aspects of your application for admission. Uh, we love to interview as many of our applicants as possible. That is an optional piece of, of the interview, I mean, of the application. So if you would like to interview and get to know us a little bit more and so that we can get to know you a little bit more, you can uh, do an interview. Um, we are also test optional and we were test optional prior to the pandemic and we will continue to be test optional uh, because we believe that tests are just one small part of the application uh, process and only one small part of who you are as a student. We want to know more about you as an individual. We want to know about you as a student in the classroom, but we also want to know who you are outside of the classroom and what you can bring to our campus community. Uh, we have a very diverse campus community. We have almost all 50 states represented on our campus and our 5,500 uh, undergraduates on our campus. And we have close to 100 countries represented on our campus as well. So even though it's a small campus community, when you come, you will be able to interact with a diverse population. Uh, so thank you for the time, really appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you'll have it, some questions for me and I will make sure to put my uh, email in the chat. Perfect. Thank you very much, Andre. Next up, we've got Oakland University. Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Drew Huff. I am an admissions advisor with Oakland University. I'm going to get my screen pulled up here now. Um, yes, so Oakland University, who are we? Where are we? Uh, I'm happy to talk about it all with you today. So I'm going to kind of briefly start by talking a little bit about who we are and where we are. So OU is located in Rochester, Michigan. Uh, so, of course, following right after Rochester, New York, uh, we are about 45 minutes north of downtown Detroit in a very suburban uh, residential area of the metro Detroit area. Um, it is a very safe area as well, and hopefully, you know, you'll be able to see campus sometime in the future. We are a medium-sized institution, so we've got just around 19,000 students, between 19 and 20,000 students that attend. Um, obviously, that fluctuated a little bit with COVID over the last year, but um, that's generally the size of um, our, our university, most of our students being, of course, in undergraduate, the rest of our students being in graduate certificate, master's programs, and uh, in our medical school on campus as well. We have an average undergraduate course size, about 35 students per undergraduate course. That, of course, will vary, um, but we do like to keep our class sizes small so that students can have that uh, more personalized interaction with their faculty and their professors. We have over 300 different student organizations that can join, and that's going to be varying in a variety of different areas, and I'll talk about that a little bit more as I move forward here. So uh, one thing I definitely want to highlight, of course, is going to be our academics. So we are a university that is primarily focused in the uh, most of our majors are being, going to be in the liberal arts and sciences. But we do have specialized schools in a number of different areas as well, over 140 different undergraduate programs that students can choose from. We like to keep our options as diverse as possible for students to have those options, depending on what career or future pathway that they, they want to take. So it's definitely important for us to be able to to offer those options to our students. Um, on top of the liberal arts and sciences, we do also have specialized areas in uh, engineering and computer science, which is one of our bigger schools, which has a 99% placement rate after graduation of either going into a full-time job or into um, graduate education afterward. We have our School of Nursing, we have a School of Education, a School of Business, uh, even a School of Music, Theater, and Dance. So there's a lot of different options for students to choose from, no matter what uh, field that they want to go into. A couple of points of pride for us. We are the number one safest public institution in the state of Michigan and actually number three in the entire country. That was just recently renewed. We have been the safest in Michigan um, for several years running now. And we're also top five in LGBTQ plus inclusivity in the state of Michigan and offer a variety of free services and initiatives to our students. And I'll talk about some of those more and how we do that. Living on campus is definitely an option that we encourage our students to consider. We have just over 3,000 students that actually live on campus. So as you can see, it is totally optional for our students to live on campus. We do not require it. Even as freshmen, students are not required to live on campus, but we do encourage it as it can really provide a lot of really awesome opportunities 
for our students. We have seven different residence halls and two student apartment complexes that students can live in. Uh, and that smaller number of students living on campus as opposed to those that, you know, total amount that go to OU can really provide a, a close knit community and offer a lot of great uh, opportunities for students to make friends, get involved um, and being able to to study uh, and live with uh, people in your specific programs or with related interests to you as well. We offer uh, full virtual tours of all of our residence halls um, right now. If you go to tinyurl.com slash OU housing, you can find all those there or just go to oakland.edu slash housing. Cost of attendance. So this is obviously an important one that we want to cover for students. We have our cost of attendance split into two different areas. Of course, our tuition, you're going to see that on average be right around the thirteen dollars to $14,000 mark for your freshman and sophomore year. That will go up a little bit as your classes um, become a little bit higher level. You'll see that go into the fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 range, but that all really depends on the specific classes that you're registered for as each of our classes is uh, going to be a different cost depending on the subject and the amount of credits it's worth and everything as well. Housing is completely optional, so um, definitely want to um, ex, you know, emphasize that it's not required, but it is all inclusive as well as our tuition. Um, so everything is kind of rolled into one there, including your meal plan and other uh, on-campus services. So that brings our grand total cost of attendance to just about $24,000 per year for four years. That's of course before any scholarships, financial aid, anything like that is applied. And you can learn more about all that oakland.edu slash financial services. One thing I want to point out specifically in relation to students from Illinois, we offer uh, in-state tuition rates for out-of-state students. So it is a scholarship that we offer that covers the differential between in-state and out-of-state tuition. As, and to qualify for that award, you just have to qualify for admission. So basically, if you qualify for admission, you will likely qualify for our scholarship that covers that differential. So you'll be paying in-state tuition no matter where you're from. Uh, on top of all those costs, we have absolutely no fees. Uh, for our students here at OU, they are not required to pay a fee to apply on, you know, to our university. There's no enrollment deposit, no fees to park on campus, or if you're living on campus, no fee to use laundry or any of the other services. It's all inclusive within the cost that you're already paying for your classes. So that's the main thing you need to worry about, paying for your classes, paying for your housing, and then your textbooks. But everything provided to you by the university, that's going to be completely uh, free of any additional charge. We have a really thriving student life on campus, uh, 300 different student, student organizations, as I mentioned, those are going to be in a variety of different areas, including, you know, religious, um, political, interest-based, Greek life, we have 17 different fraternities and sororities, um, and tons of other uh, areas as well. We are a Division I school, we're in the Horizon League, which is a smaller Midwestern league, um, 18 Division I men's and women's athletic programs, and as I mentioned, over 19,000 students that attend. You can find some more information about all of our campus life opportunities at oakland.edu slash campus life. Our surrounding area is one really cool part about us. Uh, we are located, as I mentioned, right in the heart of the Metro Detroit area. So we're surrounded by a lot of really awesome areas and awesome companies that students can work in after they graduate. Internship programs at areas like uh, Chrysler, we're right next door to Fiat Chrysler World Headquarters, our campuses butt right up against each other. Uh, and we're obviously you know, pretty close to Detroit. So there's a lot of industry. And as you can see on the screen here, um, tons of opportunity for students to get out and um, go to Ro downtown Rochester, which is right down the road, hiking, biking, recreation opportunities, our Meadowbrook Mansion, which is on campus. It's the fourth largest house museum in the country. And it was the mansion of our founder, uh, Matilda Dodge Wilson, who was married to one of the Dodge brothers from the Dodge Motor Company. And we have music venues on and off campus, uh, including Meadowbrook Amphitheater, which is a really awesome outdoor concert venue that we have on campus. And hopefully we'll be able to use that again soon. As I finish up here, I just wanna talk about our application process. It is completely free. We're not on the common application. You can go to oakland.edu, complete our application very easily. We have an optional essay on there. The main things that we're going to be requiring is going to be your high school transcript that details out your cumulative grade point average. We're looking for around a 2.5 cumulative high school grade point average, uh, and we are test optional, so tests are not required um, for the fall of 2021 or the fall of 2022, still determining for future semesters as well, uh, but not required for admission. You are still welcome to send those, though, if you'd like to be considered for some other scholarship uh, and class placement opportunities as well. Uh, here's my contact information. You can screenshot this. This will be on the recording. You can scan that QR code. Um, I'm available all the time for any questions or providing more info. So please reach out. You can find my information also at oakland.edu slash future students. 
We have virtual campus tours available and on-campus tours available um, starting in May here. So definitely go to oakland.edu slash visit to sign up for one of our virtual or in-person events. I think Great. that is about it. So thank you very much. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Next up, we've got Reed College. Take it away now. Oh, muted Nell. All right, thank you for that reminder. I think I'd figure it out. I have not yet. Um, welcome, folks. My name is Nell Scherfling. I'm an admissions fellow here at Reed College. We are a small liberal arts school located in Portland, Oregon. Um, I want to do things a little bit backwards today and start off talking a little bit about our admission and financial aid policies. That can be an interesting way to just see how we do things a little bit differently at Reed. We like to challenge the norm, think outside the box, and first and foremost, pay homage to our students and make sure that we're setting folks up for success. Um, we have zero application fee to, reply, to apply. We haven't for a really long time. We care about decreasing those barriers to access in higher ed. Um, we also are completely test blind. Um, for this past year and this coming year, we're not using any standardized tests in our evaluation of applicants. We use a holistic review process. We're looking at all parts of your application, not just a GPA, not just a test score. We want to know what you contribute to a community, what you're passionate about, and how you share that with others. Uh, when it comes to financial aid, we are a uh, private liberal arts college that can come with a bit of a heftier price tag, but I never want that to be a reason that turns away an applicant. Reed is dedicated to meeting 100% of a family's demonstrated need, and we offer an average financial aid award of around $41,000. Um, each year. So again, merit aid, uh, and we don't offer any merit aid. We put all of our funds directly towards our families that need it the most. Um, and that just allows us to attract a really unique, diverse population of students. Um, so we're located in Portland, Oregon, within the city itself. You can see this beautiful um, overshot of our great lawn, big green sprawling location on campus full of uh, <laughs> full of frisbees, lawn chairs, a good day like this. Our small student body is out and proud in the sunshine. We're only 15 to 20 minutes away from downtown Portland, um, really thriving music scene, food from all around the country in any of our food pods near campus. So we're really proud and connected with the city of Portland. Like I said, we're a small school. We have only 1,400 students and we're an entirely undergraduate facility. Um, that means that when professors come to read, they're coming because they want to be in a small classroom environment. Our classes are primarily discussion-based. You're doing the work outside of class and you're coming in to share your thoughts with each other. Um, it's not the type of school where you're gonna blend in or hide. We have an average class size of 17 students and a nine to one faculty to student ratio. Um, you're calling your faculty by their first name. You're going to their uh, their house afterwards for tea or to get to know them better. Um, it's a school where students really care about living and learning in a community with each other. Um, and one other part of the academic process at Reed that I want to emphasize is our senior thesis. Um, Reed is a school that it takes liberal arts uh, really traditionally to mean we want to create scholars. We want to create students who are asking questions and finding the answers to them on their own. Every single student at Reed completes a year long independent research project in their final year called the senior thesis. I brought mine along as well. It's a beautiful leather copy full of your independent work. Um, whatever your major is in, you're working one on one with a professor to define and hone a question in that discipline. You're spending an entire year exploring all the intricacies of it. It'll wound up between a 60 to 90 page leather bound volume. Um, you'll get to keep one, um, but one will also live on in Reed's library just as a testament to all of our scholars um, across the years. That's one reason that Reed has uh, ranked between the third and fourth highest producer of PhDs because students are completing this year long in depth research project in their final year. Um, many students at Reed will also go on to work in education, to work in nonprofits, to become entrepreneurs. Um, there are many value sets at Reed that about sharing, about mutual aid, working together, being collaborative in the classroom. And we find that that just shapes students up for a toolkit of problem solving skills after their time here. When it comes to social life, like I mentioned, we're a small student body, only 1,400 students, and performing arts is a key part of the social community. About 80% of students who were in any performing arts production at Reed this last year were not performing arts majors. Um, we have anthro students in our dance classes. Um, we have musicians in our bio labs. It's a school where students are allowed to do as much interdisciplinary work um, as interests them. We have very few 
barriers or boundaries between each disciplines. And that just speaks to our non-hierarchical sense of community. Each student who comes to read is really treated as an equal and able to explore the bounds of what interests them. Um, some other things I wanna highlight are just some of our um, travel opportunities. Students are regularly planning and executing their own summer and winter research travel options. This last year, we had one student travel to Sicily, Italy to study street puppets. Um, we had another student complete a year-long uh, Watson Fellowship after she graduated, looking at the ecological impact of radiation in Japan, in Russia, and within the U.S. Um, that's my sneaky way of mentioning that we do have a nuclear reactor on campus. We're one of the, we're the only school to have a nuclear reactor entirely run by undergrad students. Um, if you are thinking about physics or thinking about radiation, you can get involved. You don't need to be a physics major. Um, this past year, the entire program was overseen by an anthropology major. Um, so again, the students are just given pretty free reign to go and execute um, with their interests. Um, and then the last thing I want to say about Reed is just our small, uh, close sense of community. It's a student body bound by the honor principle, an undefined idea to treat others with honor. Um, it makes students think critically about their actions and how they impact each other. And it allows us to just be in this community with so many resources, research opportunities, an entire uh, wood shop available in our art studio um, without always having to ask questions or, you know, have as many strict regulations as a larger school because we're trusting students to behave honorably um, and to share with each other. Um, I'll also just go ahead and throw a couple of my own contact info in the chat. I know six minutes is way too short to really get to know a school. Um, so you have my email up front as well as this last email, write a ready. That'll go to any of our student workers in the office. So if you want to hear more about a particular major, about food, about what it means to live in Portland, our students are the best option for you. Um, so I'll leave it there. Again, Reed, we're a small liberal arts college in Portland, Oregon, with a love for learning um, and sharing that in a community. Thanks so much, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Nell. Perfect. Our uh, last college is going to be Washington University in St. Louis. Take it away, Cyrus. Thanks. All right, I am ready. All right, hopefully you all can see my screen. Uh, my name is Cyrus Nichols. I'm the Deputy Director of Admissions at Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, so happy to be here tonight to let you know a little bit about Washington University and all the great things that we have to provide and offer the, the 1800 students who enroll in our campus each and every fall semester. Um, I am not the territory manager for uh, this area. It's actually, your name is Elena, but you can find her uh, content information on the website, and I will also share it in the chat after I am done. There we go. So uh, on the screen there, you will see a map of St. Louis, uh, the city that we call home. Uh, St. Louis is a medium-sized city of around 3 million people, uh, but one thing that I think students really enjoy is that you get the best of both worlds, right? You get a big city and a small town. Uh, we have beautiful parks, museums. We have passionate sports fans, uh, awesome food scene. Um, if you look in the center of the screen there, you'll see that that green, that green area towards us, the bottom of the screen, I'm sorry, that is Forest Park. It's one of the largest urban parks in America. There's tons of stuff to do in that park. There's a zoo that's free. Uh, uh, the museums are free. The science center are free. Uh, there, there's tons and tons of biking and walk, walking trails. There's golf courses, you name it. So that's within a seven to eight minute walk of our campus as well. Um, if you look to the, to the north of that, you see the loop. And that is the Del Mar Loop, which is a popular hangout spot for our students. Um, lots of different uh, cultural foods and ethnic foods that you can find only in St. Louis. Um, theaters, um, 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 bowling alleys, uh, you name it, a lot of cool things you can find in the Del Mar Loop. And I definitely encourage you and recommend that you check it out if you decide to come visit St. Louis in the future. Um, not too far from downtown is uh, we're about a 10 minute drive to downtown. Um, and downtown is home of our, our St. Louis Cardinals. We have an NHL hockey team as well. So a lot of different easy things to find and get access to um, within a short walk or a short commute of our campus at Wash U University. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, but also we want our students to get off campus and we want to, them to engage in the city around them. And we also want them to feel like this is their own home as well, too. So part of that is we, we provide each and every student with free metro passes is given to all students. Um, it gives them access to the light rail, uh, public buses, 
Um, there are two Metrolink stops in, on the Danforth campus. On the screen there, you'll see um, the, the main campus, it says WashU, and we have our medical campus. So we have two main campuses, um, but we have two Metrolink stops on the Danforth campus um, and a bus stop connecting to the airport and also a bus stop connecting both the Danforth, med, the Danforth campus, the medical campus, and the, and the downtown as well too. Um, on the screen there, you'll see a little bit more about our undergraduates uh, programs, undergraduate by divisions. Uh, on campus, our community is diverse, it's inclusive, it inclusive, it's collaborative, um, very, very creative our students are. Uh, we have five undergraduate academic divisions, uh, which are arts and sciences, engineering, business, art and architecture. Within our art and architecture, our Sam Fox School of Art and Architecture, we actually have a museum, one of the oldest museum uh, west of the Mississippi. Um, our campus represents all 50 states, uh, U.S. territories, and over 50 countries. Um, and this geographic uh, diversity brings with it all forms of diversity, and we are very proud of the diversity on our campus, um, whether it be racial, ethnic, uh, socioeconomic, religious, or political, um, you will find all that on our campus. And we want to continue to provide that diversity on our campus for our students so they can have those real world experiences while they are in the classrooms, in the campus communities, within their residence halls as well, too. Um, one thing that we know, because we have so many unique students um, with their own interests and lived experiences, we want to make sure we can treat them as the, in, as the individuals that they are. So uh, this way of thinking leads to our unofficial motto is to get to know every student by name and story. Um, our community is one that values open, respectful, and honest communication. <clears throat> and our faculty and staff really challenge our students to be engaged in dialogue and make sure that they feel comfortable in the uncomfortable, um, often resulting in students discovering more about themselves and in the community in that process as well. Well, can you see this next slide? Uh, one thing about WashU is that we we pride ourselves at being a place of discovery. Um, you know, students can choose of one in five divisions as a home base um, that, that, that I mentioned in the previous slide, but the breadth of our university is available to all students, you know, regardless of your academic, of your background, your initial academic interests, um, from our classes and our research, study abroad, extracurricular activity. You know, students are able to combine their passion into unique paths that best fit who they are. Um, most of our courses are, are most most of our courses are small. Um, our classes are, are discussion based classes uh, with the average class size of 26 students. On the screen there, you see we have a seven to one fact student faculty ratio. 79% of our classes have less than have less than 30 students. Um, and, and we want students we want students to be active participant in the learning process each and every day, um, supporting and challenging each other. And we want them to help them think of new ways to learn and be creative while they are a student on our campus as well. Um, interdisciplinary study is, the, is a very, uh, is a hallmark of the WashU academic community. Um, students are able to have majors and minors in multiple divisions. Um, around 80% of our students graduate with more than one major. Um, this is a testament to both our multifaceted students and our flexible curriculum at WashU. Uh, there isn't a university-wide core curriculum, so students have a lot of choices. So it's very common for students to graduate with a second major or double minor all across all of our academic divisions at Washington University. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is that you are not alone in this process. You know, we provide our students with a comprehensive network of academic advisors. So say, say for instance, you know, you, you have an assigned academic advisor for your major, but say you wanna go into pre-med, we do have pre-med academic advisors. So you have a pre-med advisor and also an advisor for your major and all of our advisors talk and they communicate so that way they make sure that you're making the right decisions so you, can pursue, so you can pursue the academic choices that you want. <clears throat> our four-year major, minor, and pre, our four, wait, our four-year major, minor, and pre-professional uh, residential programs are all resources for you to find the best path to help you reach your goals here at Washington University. Um, and then finally on the slide, on that bottom right, uh, we have 11 <clears throat> faculty fellows who live within the residence halls with, with our students. Um, and that way you can help further those community connections while you are a student here at Washington University. So learning doesn't end in the classroom, it continues on within our residence halls uh, at Washington University. Um, I know my time is getting short, but a few things here. Um, we are always trying to encourage our students uh, to continue learning outside the classroom uh, to, to, get that, to get those experiential learning opportunities. Um, every one of our academic majors uh, offers students the ability to study abroad. 40% of our students choose to do so. Uh, as a tier one research one institution, 
Um, we always see each and every year our students take advantage of these opportunities. Um, and they truly, truly help them uh, inspire their intellectual passion, develop new things, be creative and learn um, in cool and unique ways on the campus at WashU. Um, students can own their own businesses through our student entrepreneurial program. So if you start a business at WashU, we don't retain any of the, of, the, of the proprietary information. It's all yours when you leave WashU. That is totally yours. You own it 100%. Um, and or also, if you want, you can get involved in St. Louis through our Get Part Institute of Civic and Community Engagement, which helps you get out from camp to, to out, outside the campus community to do some great work if you are interested in that as well. Hey, Cyrus, I hate to cut you off, but we are running low on time. If you want to wrap it up and share your contact information, yes. I final so, details. So, yes, Thank so, you. Yes. Sorry about that. If you have any questions, please really reach out to me. I know I'm long winded as well. Uh, one thing, real quick, right here. Uh, we have a $3.5 million student budget uh, to fund our student groups and activities. So um, our students get to get the best shows and concerts and things that come to our campus. On the screen there, it talks about our, our applicants there. And we are on the Common App and Coalition um, application. And for 2022, we are test optional as well. So if you look on the screen there, you see our contact information. So please feel free to reach out to myself or Elena, who is the contact for this particular territory. So I'm sorry I'm long-winded. It's six minutes. Is, it goes by really fast. So thanks a lot for coming out tonight, and I appreciate your, 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 your time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, we are now at the end of our session, so I want to thank all of our reps for joining us this evening. Uh, when you close this window, you will be a, a very quick four-question survey that will appear on your screen. I want to make also a plug for our students. Uh, there is one more hour of this fair happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And also meet, make sure to meet with your counselor and ask questions in that counselor corner. So on that uh, site, strivescan.com slash Ignatius, you'll see that link to open the counselor corner meeting and join them. Ask any other questions you may have throughout uh, this session and all of our sessions were recorded, and you'll be able to find those on the same website where you registered in about a week. So thank you again to all of our reps from around the country who have joined us this evening. And we want to thank you uh, for sharing your time and energy with us. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye. <laughs>